Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. And Mr. Carter, you have the honor. Yes, I do. Will you join me in prayer, please? Father God, we just come before you tonight, dear Lord. We come seeking for humility, for wisdom, courage, compassion, so many needs, dear Father. The needs of our citizens, the needs of our county employees, the needs to serve our community. We know, dear Father, that you can guide us in each and every one of these things that we seek your, seek all the things I've asked for, dear Lord. We ask that you be with us tonight, that you be with those who have traveled here, give them safety as they travel home. We ask, dear Father, that you uh, bless the, the mediations of these of this meeting. And we ask that you take us uh, through it in safety, compassion, and love. And we ask all this, dear Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Show me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, in the indivisible, in the liberty and justice for all. Next time I'm going to ask him to take, <laughs> take it off and leave it. He started out on <laughs> Okay, do I have a motion as to the agenda? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, signal call by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, now comes one of the fun parts of this y'all. A presentation um, for which I need um, Jessica Moody, Susan Evans, and county manager. So all come forward, please. <laughs> Smile. Smile. <laughs> Are we forward enough? Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, this group put together a budget for 23-24, uh, which was outstanding. Not only was it outstanding, but it earned a major award, which I don't think Alabama County has ever had before, ever. This is an honor presented by the uh, Government Finance Office Association for Distinguished Budget Presentation for the award for 23-24, and it recognizes the staff of the County Manager's Office, the Budget and Management Offices, and the Financial Department for their efforts to prepare this annual budget. Um, LMS County has received a government, a government Finance Office Association Award, Distinguished Budget Award, presentation for which uh, shows significant achievement for policy documentation, financial planning, operations guide, and communications device. Those are the four categories. Um, out of 17 
hundred possible applicants, this county and this award shows that you guys earned this. Um, I am just, and I say I, I mean we, the county commissioners and our taxpayers and citizens are very, very pleased and what an honor. The presentation, uh, the certificate itself reads, certificate of rec uh, recognition for bud budget preparation by the Department of, uh, the to the Department of Alamance County, North Carolina, and is signed by the Executive Director of the Association. Mr. Lashley, if you want to hand this to Brian Baker, it's heavy. It's, it's very heavy. Well, maybe I should get it. <laughs> <laughs> good one, good one. Good. No heavy lifting for Brian. <laughs> that was so appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. We'll all stand up behind him. I wish you guys could squeeze in some more. No, we don't need the commissioners. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Oh, honey, that was your first budget, right? Congratulations. Miss <laughs> York came in as a brand slap new county manager. Not new to county managing, but new to Alamance County. And under the gun, with very little time, uh, put this thing together. And we all thank you. Susan Evans, Brian Team Baker, effort. all you guys. Team thank effort. you. Nice work. Okay. We now have public comments. And it appears that we have 13 people that have signed up. Sheet got hung up. <laughs> okay, Stuart Smith. Each speaker, before your time starts, every speaker has three minutes. Uh, you are not required to use all three. <laughs> oh, speakers, that was supposed to be funny. You can laugh now. <laughs> oh. Please give us your name, address, and whether you're an Alamance County citizen or not. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Stuart Smith. I reside at 811 South 3rd Street in Mebane. As with all budgets, I know this time of year is very challenging. I understand the needs and obligations of the county must be met while trying to hold the property tax rate as low as possible. I understand there are citizens in the county who are challenged financially. I hope that anyone who feels burdened by paying their property tax bill will look into the homestead exemption as I did. The county tax office does a wonderful job of explaining the program. Anyone who has concerns and feels they may lose their home should check with the tax office on this program. There is help available. Having said that, the county must still meet our obligations. If I stand before you and ask you not to adjust the tax rate or needed, as needed, are the obligations of the county going away? Power bills the county receives, the insurance premiums the county has to pay, county-owned vehicle maintenance, et cetera, are still due. When we fail to adjust the tax rate to meet our county's needs, we are shifting an undue burden to our county employees, our sheriff's office, our EMS workers, and our school system. If we fail to pay and fund our county employees and teachers market rate, we are doing them an injustice. The responsibility lies with all of us. When most of us think of schools, we probably think of teachers, students, educational material, etc. Sometimes we need to look deeper than that. The support staff at our schools are vital. A call to the ABSS system today revealed to me that there are over 50 foreign language students in our school system that we have to get fluent enough to get at grade level. 
I think of students who meet the legal definition of homeless as defined, defined by McKinney Vento Act. Students who lack a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence are classified as homeless. This may be a student living in a motel with a parent and maybe Aunt Margaret next week. They're certainly at risk. I think of the school social worker who tries to work with these students along with their teachers to try to get them in school and get them at grade level. The last time I had a number on this, we had over 700 homeless children in ABSS. My heart breaks. The 176,000 residents of Alamance County look to our county commissioners for leadership. As we moved into a new budget, we will soon have a new school superintendent. This has been a tough year, as we all know. Please fund our schools so that our new superintendent will not be handicapped from a budget standpoint. Our students deserve this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We must ask, we're limited in time, and we only allot 30 minutes from beginning to end for speakers. So I'm going to ask you to hold your applause and, and so forth until after the meeting, and then talk to the speakers individually. But I don't want to take time away from the speakers. Uh, Henry Vines. After Henry will be Joseph, is it Lauren? Floreal. Please, you'll be next. Thank you, Commissioner. My name is Henry Vines. I live 3450 Isley Drive. Been a resident of Alamance County all my life. I've come for you tonight. I wanted to make a uh, announcement. I, I made a kind of a miss uh, quote last uh, meeting. Uh, Commissioner Sutton called me. When I said we raised taxes by five cent uh, to raise uh, money for the fund balance, it actually was two cent. And the two cent occurred in 2012. And it was done at the after a letter was received by the county saying that their fund balance had dropped below standard. It was not a threat made, but it was below standard. So the commissioners at that time chose to put a two cent tax on property tax to build the fund balance back up. 2013, they reduced this by one cent. And it left it there at one cent to keep on building the fund balance. Well, in 2014, a new committee come on, new commissioners come on. That's where my five cent was. I spoke at that meeting too. Uh, we increased taxes on the citizens by five cent. That's six cents in three years that, that was increased. It was a huge burden on a lot of people when it went to five cent. Back at that day, a cent penny was only 1.2 cent. I mean 1.2 million. Today, one penny for taxpayers is two and a half million. You're asking every penny that you increase, you're asking for two and a half million out of the citizens of Alamance County. That was 1.6 million three years ago. The reevaluations came, the top of the taxes nearby uh, values doubled. So as you go through this budget, take this in mind. And I also would like to say, you know, the things that we have to fund, we have to fund. The things that we don't have to fund, we need to defund them. <coughs> and that will balance the scales so that you don't have to raise taxes and put a burden on each citizen of this county. The second, the next thing I would like to ask that I've not heard is about the fire tax. And when I say the fire tax, that's the volunteer fire departments. Is our is our taxes, is our volunteer fire departments going to go up on the property tax? That is an increase on the rural part of this county. If you allow the fire departments to go up a penny, that's just an additional penny that each citizen in the county is going to have to pay. I'm not sure where it's at. I did see in the budget where there was increases, but I never could find the exact amount of if it was an increase on the actual penny. Um, so I would just, if you would, clarify that. I'd appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And um, I think that uh, Heidi has made a good recommendation and that we should stay with it. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you.
Joseph Florcia? Florio. Florio. Okay, thank you. I'll get you to correct the pronunciation, please. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Joseph Florio, and I live in Burlington, and I am almost in fifth grade. Our schools are so important to everyone in our community. I don't like seeing important teachers and staff losing their jobs. Those who support staff jobs are so important to kids like me, and I just don't understand why or how you guys keep firing good teachers and staff. If you guys keep going down this road, you're gonna go. You're going to be short-staffed. Matter of fact, you guys are short-staffed. You guys canceled summer school because you guys were short-staffed. And I would want teachers to have trauma t trauma training. It doesn't even have to be that much, just enough so they know how it works. And I want our budget for our schools to be just enough to fix our schools. And when I was in first grade, we used to be provided with school supplies. Now three years later, and for in fourth grade, we don't, and I don't want there to be any roofs leaking, mold, etc. My opinion is, I don't think all the schools are clean. Maybe some of them are, but most of them, they need to be cleaned a lot this summer. Matter of fact, if we started cleaning and fixing today, they would be all clean and fixed by the end of the summer. I just want our schools to be safe, clean, and healthy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Peter Moore. Uh, Peter Morecambe. Good evening. My name is Peter, Peter Morecambe. I live stars. at... Uh, sorry? Joseph, if you will stay to the end of the meeting, we'll answer your question. Thank you. Uh, my name is Peter Morecambe. I live at 474 Thompson, Thompson Road, Graham. And I'm here for something that you're probably all very well aware of, the top of the fold. This is not a new scandal. This is just the latest installment of a long-running scandal. Why do these scandals keep on happening? Well, because we don't take appropriate disciplinary action. So uh, I looked in the paper hoping to find out what was going to be done to prevent this sort of thing happening again. Of course, there was nothing. And uh, I, I would call upon school officials to make some statement that will placate people like me who see a lot of money being wasted and to ensure this kind of stuff doesn't keep happening. Now, what usually happens is you, the commissioners, start asking the questions that the school board should have asked and you get accused of finger pointing I say bring it on. Let's have lots of finger pointing and appropriate disciplinary action. Is that it? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Looks like Donna Westbrook. Am I reading that name correctly? Hang on. She might be I think it's Van Hook instead of Westbrook. It is not a Van Hook. Good evening, commissioners. I am Donna Van Hook. I live at 317 Casual Street. Um, I want to talk about the finger pointing in such a way that um, we discontinue it and get down to business. Uh, I am recalling uh, comments that you all as commissioners made after the last uh, public hearing for the budget. And I had a, a meeting like within a couple of days with the North Carolina um, Tax and Budget Center. And I learned that some of the public comments as I thought about it and um, proceeded through the webinar, they didn't make a lot of sense. And so I implore you to please, please do what's best for our young people in schools, for the buildings that need to be uh, continually cleaned up. I want to reiterate what little Joe said, if I may call him little Joe. Uh, also, uh, let us invest in trauma-informed schools because there are still some 
unhealed trauma in our county, especially with the young people having uh, made it through the uh, pandemic. However, uh, some have uh, chosen to continue to go to virtual school because that meets their needs better. So I ask and implore you to find the funding to fully fund our schools um, and less of the finger pointing because it gets us nowhere. And I'm speaking as one um, elected official to a uh, board of others. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Leonard Harrison. Mr. Vines covered what I had to say. Right. As he was speaking, I'm like, okay, well, he's saying it, so there's no point in me getting up. And we thank you for leaving our pleasure pleasure. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little passionate about it. Amen, brother. <clears throat> Medora Burke School. Good to see and hear from you again. Uh, hello. Um, hi, commissioners. You have a really hard job to do tonight, as you always do. Um, I'm here, Medora Burke School. I live at uh, 3673 Mebane Rogers uh, Road. I'm here on behalf of the Alamance Burlington Association of Educators. Uh, I know that tonight is going to be hard. Um, I'm just so hopeful, and I was really hopeful, Mr. Carter, listening to your opening prayer, that you can set aside egos and rhetoric tonight and find solutions to the hard problems in our county. Um, no one envies the position that you're in. It's a really difficult year for a budget. Um, what I would like to point out is that uh, lots and lots of research shows that increased spending in education raises graduation rates, boosts adult income, uh, lowers crime rates. So as you're considering funding tonight, recognize that the funding choices that you make for our school system have repercussions for everyone in Alamance County, uh, whether they have school-aged children or not, right? Um, if your neighbor's kid doesn't make it through high school and graduate, he's much less likely to be an upstanding taxpayer and much more likely to steal your television when you go to work. So we need quality schools, and I know that it's a tough tax year to do that. Um, but a 10% increase in education funding uh, results in 7% higher wages by the age of 40, uh, and three percentage point lower likelihood that those exposed will be um, will be below the poverty limit at any time in their life. So every investment dollar spent on schools, the research calculates has a $2 return on investment in the community in terms of less programs that you need to spend later on um, in terms of poverty and crime rates and things like that. We know that funding makes a difference. We've seen how much funding our community college makes a difference. Um, it is a disappointment that the funding has fallen on the county level and that you have to scrape together and raise property taxes to do a job that the state of North Carolina should be doing. And I'm sorry that that falls to you. I'm sorry that you have to pay supplements to keep people employed in our schools so that they don't leave the county or leave the state. Unfortunately, we know that funding matters and we know that supplements make a difference. Uh, after the last discussion of getting rid of supplements and using that to fill uh, the school budget, I got phone call after phone call of people freaking out. Uh, I have, in the last two weeks, I've gotten nine reference check phone calls for colleagues of mine that are leaving the county either to go to Guilford or Orange County or, or thinking about leaving the county and have interviewed there. They're going to those counties not because they don't like teaching in ABSS schools, but because they have a family to feed, kids to raise, uh, vehicles to put gasoline in, and mortgages to pay. So. You originally had a supplement because you knew it would help fill those classroom positions. Please consider uh, retaining that policy. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Camille uh, Nicholson. And you have a partner, Lily, that should approach with you. Yeah. <laughs> And you each have three minutes. Yes, thank you. I'll get started while she's coming up. Uh, my name is Camille Mickelson. I live in Haw River, 27258. I am not only a citizen of Alamance County, a resident, I am also a mom of school-aged children. My children go to Garrett Elementary. I 
I'm with the organization Down Home North Carolina. I'm a former public school teacher and an education policy researcher. I implore you to not punish our children for bureaucratic errors. They deserve to have buildings with working lights and water, adequate air conditioning, and clean air to breathe. I want to address briefly the concept of compassion. Commissioner Carter prayed for compassion in the start of our meeting today, and I, I just want to briefly talk about this. Um, Compassion is an important part of many faiths, in my understanding. Um, and I was taught that the word compassion is similar to the word empathy, maybe even synonymous. Um, and that empathy means taking a walk in someone else's shoes, imagining what it's like to be in someone else's position. And so I want to ask you, commissioners, recently, have you walked in the shoes of a student with dyslexia, a single mom, have you walked in the shoes of a father who can't make enough money to feed his family despite holding three jobs? Have you walked in the shoes of a high school senior or a rising kindergartner? Have you walked in the shoes of an elementary school teacher in ABSS or a high school counselor or a middle school principal or assistant principal? And I ask you, how deep is your compassion? How strong is your empathy? Please fund our schools. Thank you. And Lily, you have a full three minutes. You okay. Um, hello, I'm Lily Mickelson, and I live in Hall River, North Carolina. Sorry. <laughs> and I live in Hall River, North Carolina. Um, I'm from Audrey Elementary, and I have been hearing a lot about the budget cuts in this district, and we need this to stop. We can't. We can't do this forever. Furthermore. Kids in elementaries across the district have lost teachers, and morale is low. And when morale is low, um, focus and mental health is lowered. And that proves that kids are academically failing because of lost administrators and teachers. And all that the kids in this district want is that is for the budget cuts to at least to either stop or be lowered. And you can do that by not putting money in places where it's just being wasted and starting to really see where are the best places to put money. Thank you for your time. And we thank you as well. Okay, Deborah Smith. Deborah Smith, is she in over? She's coming, she's in here. All right, thank you. Hey, ma'am, uh, yes. we have a few more seats over here. At least a couple. Okay. Maybe to hold it or? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Deborah Smith. I live at 3378 Garden Road in Burlington, and I um, have been in Alamance County for about 25 years, and I don't have any children in Burlington or in Alamance County, but I do have an interest in this. I did have children and grandchildren going to school in the past, and I just you know, I care about kids, and I care about this subject. And I used to have a friend that was on the school board. Well, she's still alive, but I mean Patsy. And she used to send pictures a lot of the schools in Alamance County and things that were going on in them. And I used to look at things way before, you know, things had been really recognized of mold and of things happening in the schools and holes in the roofs and a lot of things that were going on that people didn't know about, but she'd send pictures to us on Facebook, you know, a lot of us that were her friends. And so I saw a lot of these things that were happening way before a lot of other people did probably. And I thought it was terrible. And I mean, when I heard about the mold situation this year, the way it was taken care of, it really bothered me. So I started coming and listening, and it still bothers me very bad. 
and you know the things like the bleachers falling down Cummings and you know somebody could have got hurt bad with that and I really care that children can be hurt I ended up in a wheelchair because I got bad asthma because of uh, breathing stuff in my neighborhood that hurt me and mold was probably the culprit and I mean so I know how sick and how much trouble it can cause in your life from breathing that kind of stuff. So I really don't want our children to have to go through that. I don't want them to end up like I am. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Sean Franklin. Sean Franklin. Is a Sean Franklin an overplay? Before you start, how many more people are in? Are Sir. There very many other people. It's like 12, 15. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, LeVon Barnes, uh, Banworth Court, Mebbin. Candidate uh, for House District 64, but that's not why I'm here. Good evening, commissioners. This is my first time addressing you, but not the first time listening to you. Leadership is hard, especially during budget budgeting season. However, it is no different than any family in this county who have to make tough decisions on what they need and what they want. The people of this county are tired of the blame game between your office and the school board. What citizens really want to know is what are you going to do about it? Funding our schools and the requests that have been asked by the board are not wants, they are needs. Personal opinions aside about how you may feel about public schools, we have an obligation to ensure every future leader in this county has what they need to be successful. It is easy to sit behind the dais and make a decision and not have to explain to those most affected why their favorite teacher is no longer going to be working at their school. It is unfair to you all that you have to make this decision in the first place. If we didn't have absentee, out of touch, insensitive leadership that represents this county and the legislature who purposely sponsored or co-sponsored taking away 500 plus million dollars of our tax dollars from public schools to go towards voucher programs, then we might be having a different conversation. Doing what is right is not always doing what is popular. Whether folks like it or not, this county is growing and with this growth means property taxes will have to go up. Commissioners should be looking at increasing programs that will allow fixed income generational families to stay in their homes. As a public school teacher for the last 19 years, we will always make school happen and get the most out of our students despite how much money we need. But why do we even have to do that? Year after year, we go through the same thing. This is no different from any other county. However, you are in the seats. You represent all of Alamance County not just the neighborhood that you live in. And so based on that, the folks in this county say, we want our schools to be fully funded. I stand on that. I hope that you make the right decision today because we will all be judged for it later on. And uh, so I appreciate your time. Thank you. We thank you as well. Daniel Ayers. He's in the back. Sorry about that, I didn't hear my name. I'm always late, and that's my mom. All right, Daniel Ayers, uh, 2585 Neilwood Avenue, Brave North Carolina. Uh, commissioners, 
Um, I've heard many folks in this county, many folks in this room, talk about wanting to create and maintain a pro-life county, and I agree with that. I want a pro-life Alamance County, and I want a budget that reflects that. We cannot neglect the funding of our public schools and claim to support life. How are we fulfilling our obligation to the unborn members of our community? They will inherit the school system we give them. Education is a fundamental part of life. And I urge you in your deliberations on this budget to remember that. A county is only, <clears throat> a budget reflects a county's values. And before today's meeting, I had the privilege of meeting a fellow in this room wearing a Hawaiian shirt named Lee. <laughs> I'd never met Lee before. Uh, we probably make different decisions when we step into the voting booth. Um, but we're here tonight for the same reason. And I was struck by Lee's story, and I don't know if he signed up to speak, so I'll let him tell it. But Lee is giving of his time and his talent and his treasure to work on his alma mater, to go to Cummings High School, and to make it a safe space for students to learn, to play, to build friendships, to build community. And I think there's probably a lot of other things Lee would like to do. He'd probably like to go to Hawaii, <laughs> based on his sartorial selection. But if Lee can do this, if Lee can do this, why can't we? We know the answer to that question. We can. We just have to walk the walk in addition to talking the talk. We have to be pro-life. We have to create a community where people want to choose to live. LaVon mentioned this before I spoke, that people are moving here. They're choosing to live here. We want them to keep making that choice. And if we don't have schools that are worth going to, they're not going to make the choice to live in Alamance County. They'll happily go to Orange or Wake. So if we're going to be pro-life, let's have a budget that reflects that. Thank you for your time. We thank you. Those are uh, the last of the speakers. We got everybody in, I'm proud to say. Okay, do we have a motion as to the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. <coughs> second. I have a motion to second. Any comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. And ladies and gentlemen, that moves us considerably this whole stack of papers beyond. <laughs> so that's that's a good thing. Oh, uh, I might also mention again, we typically often um, make comments about things that you spoke about, but we are not allowed to do that until the end of the agenda. So. Uh, I would encourage you to hang around. Okay, Mevin Planning Board appointments. Who's making that presentation? I'm not sure. All right. We have, I'll, I'll set it up. Um, Mevin Planning Board, uh, we have to approve members uh, to part of their planning board, the F FTJ member, uh, excuse me, ETJ is correct, and we have two nominees but only one position. They are Gail Pettifer and Tyler Whitley uh, are the two applicants. Uh, if you reviewed your materials online, you saw their applications uh, that were there. Do we, board, do we have a, we can only fill one position. Do we have a motion as to that vacancy? I might indicate that the Mevin Planning Board recommended Gail Pettifer. Because of their recommendation, I will make that motion. 
Do I have a second? Second. Any other comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Ms. Pettifer, like it or not, you're in. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, the only remaining item on our um, agenda for tonight is the budget itself. We had one other item, but the speaker was unable to be here, so we had to remove that, I think, before our agenda was published. So the budget itself is the remaining uh, item on our agenda. Ms. York, do you want to take happy, the lead? It's happy to introduce this item, commissioners. The budget ordinance for fiscal year 24-25 are before the board requiring a vote for adoption. We have fulfilled the legal requirements for the budgeting process, including conducting a public hearing. Staff is prepared to help you with this process or take direction as, as you'd like to give it. it. Does require a vote before July 1st, so you are still um, within the requirements of the general statutes. And I might add, we must have a budget unlike uh, Congress and all kinds of other, we have to have a budget in place before or by June 30, going into the fiscal year starting July 1. There's something that there's some as well. No. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, a uh, question here. Do we want to review this similar to what we did on Friday? The sheet that was up on the wall. On the uh, screen. We can. Um, Let us know. We've almost beat this horse to death. Uh, we've had three work sessions, a public four hearing. Four work sessions. Uh, four work sessions. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I forgot about Friday. Um, and so it's been discussed at length among the five of us, uh, among, among department heads, uh, the sheriff's office, that is not a department. It's a separate elected office uh, among some of the nonprofits, and we uh, have spent extensive time with the school system, with um, all social services, all kinds of different departments. So at this point, uh, we can have further discussion, uh, or we can have a motion and a vote, or motions and votes if one does not pass or we can discuss. I would like to add one item. Um, school system was kind enough to give us uh, all of their billing for, uh, for electricity, particularly along with Duke Power, Duke Energy statements for the month of October. Um, with that statement, um, it was a 31 day payout. October has 31 days. Uh, but it actually covered 66 days of Duke Power statements. Uh, there were a number of, and I unfortunately did not, I spent hours, or actually my wife, who taught for 42 years, by the way, and was a heavy duty IT person, put together a spreadsheet. Um, and so we were able to determine that a number of the Duke Power bills were paid more than once during that 31-day billing period. Uh, there were a number that were paid for the month of August, the first part of October, and then the September bill was paid, or bills, were paid the latter part of October. So the statements we were given were not a reflection of the true utility bills and so we're still struggling trying to put numbers together for the school system. Um, Mr. Carter suggested at one of our meetings uh, that we simply take that October bill and multiply it by 12. Um, yeah. So, uh, but that doesn't work because they paid multiple power bills, multiples in the same month for more than a 30 day time period. So that really didn't help us a lot. Um, I think that Mr. Carter and Mr. Turner had meetings with, uh, or at least telephone calls 
uh, with the school system today, and perhaps you were given later information. Uh, but I think all those power bills, and they were, I mean, a stack of power bills that we went through and put in a spreadsheet and whatever, just were not functionally uh, helpful because they covered more than, covered a 66-day billing period. <clears throat> not billing period, excuse me, usage period in a 31-day billing period. Uh, so we're still struggling coming up with numbers. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, um, we had a couple of our county employees work with, at our direction from Friday's meeting, work with ABSS this morning, met with them, and reviewed the, the ABSS bills and process for this cycle. Um, I, I think it might be appropriate for us to have Brian Baker um, approach and describe what they learned from that meeting. Yeah, thanks. We had, uh, Rick and I had an opportunity to uh, spend some time there this morning. Reviewed. Now you have a speaker, correct? Good. Yeah, I do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we reviewed a year's worth of actual expenditures uh, for all their utilities. So to do power, natural gas, water from the various utilities. Um, adding all those up, looking at the increases that Duke Power has made uh, this year and is projecting for next year, we came to a number of uh, 5.8 uh, for an estimated for the year uh, utility expenditure. We. That's very pretty much the same as what the school system gave you. We got there a different way. We kind of took some different estimations, but really ended up in the same place. So I think that 5.8 number is our best guess. It, is, it has no contingency in it. Um, so I think they will need to keep us abreast over the course of the year about their progress and their expenses. There's a very real possibility they would need to come back and look for more. But that's our best guess for the actual number for the utility expenses for the year. And that reflects the fact that they're having to run things 24 7. Yeah, and that introduces the amount of uncertainty there, right? Yeah. Otherwise, we could just look at last year. But right. because the pattern has changed, we're having to do some estimation. Um, so that's why we're doing a little bit of guessing, and that's the best we can get. Plus, a great big old new high school. Great big high school, that's right. But that's not just for Duke Energy, mm -hmm. that's for water, right. uh, right. gas, it's all for utilities. all utilities. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just to drill down that number a little bit more, there's currently 3.3 million in the recommended budget, so we would need an increase of about 2.5 million. Is that right? Um, to meet that total 5.8 estimate for all utilities for next fiscal year. How much of that was in their regular budget? Is just the 3.3 or the 3.9 that you're recommending? Uh, the 3.3 is the estimate that we have in there for utilities, which was just flat from the current year. The 3.9 that you're referencing is their pay-go pay money in capital. No. This is a current expense. So they are not. They they don't are are in different pots. They are in separate pots. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. All right. The staff has prepared just a, a few slides to reflect what we heard on Friday, if that's a helpful place to start, or if you'd like to go ahead and make motions and move forward that way, we can be I'm going to make a motion okay. at this point that we adopt the county manager's recommended budget with no changes. I second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we had some other information gathered, too, that we might want to talk about. Well, I'm saying we have a motion on the table in a second. Do we have discussion? I'd yeah. like to see the slides that she's talking about. This is the biggest decision we make, oh, kind of like a pastor. We really need to see all the information that we can, even if it's repetitive. We've been here four times. So, it doesn't matter. So vote down the motion. Uh, Let's okay. go forward. All right. That's what I'll do. Any further discussion on the open motion at this point? All right. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Did you vote? Vote no. All right. Have three no's, two yeses. Motion does not pass. <clears throat>
Mr. Chairman, we had some comments or some questions this morning, and well, we had this was actually on Friday afternoon. We had some discussions around the issue of guardrails, um, and I know I know people are are sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of saying what I'm getting ready to say. I don't ever want to have to say it again. Um, I think we have, a, I hope we have the beginnings of an excellent new administration in our school system today. And the problem that we've been dealing with on this board is the, I, I, this sounds a little trite, but the train wreck that finances were for the past year. And ABSS, and it's limited our ability to be to, to have confidence in the numbers at this point, and that's why your board of commissioners is struggling trying to reach a, a, a position on what to do to solve the problems for ABSS and meet the needs of our citizens. That's kind of where I'm coming from. The the um, guardrails we're talking about is some way to manage the finances so that if ABSS thinks they need a certain amount of money and then doesn't need it, somehow we can recover that. A lot of people don't realize that in finance, in government finance, at the federal level, if they give ABSS money and ABSS doesn't spend it, they get it back. At the state level, if they, they give ABSS money and they don't spend it, they get it back. At the county level, if we give ABSS money and they don't spend it, it's gone. Yep. Not implying that it's a lost, it's just not it's not recoverable by the county. It's It builds up their fund balance and they're not required to have a fund balance. I think it's a good idea, but they're not required to have it. So we're in on the horns of a dilemma trying to look at what has transpired in the past year and try and find a medium by which we can manage and be stewards of the finances <coughs> of Iron Man's County for the benefit of our citizens and take care of the needs of our school system. And that's what's put us where we are. Um, I don't know if we have an answer tonight. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if there's a I don't know if we'll reach a budget decision tonight. As a matter of fact, I think there's probably a better than a 50-50 chance we won't. We'll have to continue to work. Um, that said, we had some conversations around um, um, guardrails. Um, Mr. Baker, would you be willing to share the information that you've gathered in conversations with ABSS this morning about that? And it, Mr. Stevens, I think you might. Yeah, again, we both well. attended. and. Uh, had some discussions around how we can verify how, the money that we're giving them, how they're spending that, and uh, ensuring that that meets the board's priorities. So we have a very limited discretion about how they spend their money. We give it to them. We have uh, project codes that we can delineate that that money should be spent in this general area, teaching instruction, things like that, but we really can't tell them exactly how to spend their money. We haven't given that direction in the past, and they haven't gathered that information uh, over over past years because we've never asked them to. So we're not in a position to know exactly how they're spending it now and describe and tell them how they're going to do it next year. I think the best case scenario is for us to ask for additional information as the year goes, um, for ask the, ask them to spend time at the monthly oversight committee meetings that we have, and to ask the school system to make quarterly presentations to this board. Uh, to describe how they're spending the money, where it's going, how much they've spent thus far, so we can get a better idea of where the county funds are going and whether that's an appropriate use of the funds for, for this board. Um, so that's my suggestion, is that we gather more information going forward, put us in a better position to give direction or at least seek agreement uh, next year. Uh, Brian, could we um, request from the school system Starting July, when they get the electric bill, utility bills for July, to just forward that over to us, we can just keep an eye on it, to see how things are progressing, because uh, that will give us an opportunity to uh, see where things are going <coughs> over budget and maybe step in and make some 
recommendations. Is that, is that possible? Yeah, they, they've already agreed to do that, and we will be including that information in, again, the oversight committee uh, reports that we make and part of the quarterly presentations Perfect. they've agreed to give. Thank you. Let me also address, because I so heavily got into the utilities uh, situation, um, and I'm really pleased that school board members, some of you guys are here. Thank you. Um, one single school had as many as 18 meters, 18 readings from one single school. Uh, you had others such as McRae, which is, I've been in that, that's a uh, historic site, and it has almost uh, no power usage from uh, Duke Energy. Uh, it does have one meter. <laughs> uh, you have other, many of the newer schools have a single billing. Made it much, much easier to determine what the usage was and all kinds of things. Uh, the older schools, uh, yeah, Eastern High School had, for example, 18 separate meters. Um, if they have a plug-in somewhere, they must have a separate meter. It's not quite that bad. It's one for the parking lot, one for the baseball field, one for the football field, but up to 18 meters. Uh, I had the same thing with one of my look at my home, home. Uh, and I went to Duke Power, I begged, pled, uh, and encouraged and finally, they combined my bill into one single readable unit. Um, the school board is paying what they call, um, they're not even billed, each meter's not billed the same. You have uh, many bills that are billed on actual kilowatt usage, which I think is reasonable. Mm -hmm. And then you have others that are read on a, what they call on demand. They take a high, the high number for an average of four months out of the year. And what of that high number is, that's your billing. So it's usually, it can be as much as double your actual kilowatt usage. Um, but surely there's some way to meet with Duke Power, particularly Duke Energy, uh, and have not 18 separate bills, which you do for Eastern High School, um, and it be billed on your usage, not the high average for a, the highest four months out of the year. Just doesn't make any sense to me that there's that much uh, dysfunctional Duke Energy billing, one, and two, they just pick a number, apparently. Uh, so I would really encourage you guys, uh, thank goodness I'm not on your board and can't make this decision, but I would encourage you to find someone uh, that can meet with, among others, Duke Energy, and determine why you have different billing rates for different meters and why you cannot receive a single bill per unit. If surely they have the ability to do that. Um, you know, they used to ride around all the meters, and put, they don't do that anymore. They ride through the parking lot and take the readings off a computer device. So surely they can, one, save you guys a ton of money by, one, a single bill, you can tell what's going on, uh, and two, actually pay for your usage instead of some fictional number of the highest four months out of the year. So I'm just encouraging uh, you guys to do that. Save taxpayers money, save commissioners money, uh, and save teachers and parents and everybody else money in the, in the long run. And I know that a lot of you guys, um, some of your school board, at least one school board member was a teacher. I know that Mr. Carter's wife taught for what, 22 years? 27. At 27 years, my wife for 42 years. So, you know, we commissioners are not in a position that we're not sympathetic to the school system. We certainly are. You know, my four kids went through the uh, public school system 
in this county. Uh, but I'm also a taxpayer, and I'm receiving calls from taxpayers that are struggling to buy, and they have to choose medicine, food, gas for their car, or pay the taxes. And I've had several calls within the last 30 days talking about I'm going to have to sell my home because they can no longer pay the taxes. Uh, and particularly after the reval, uh, yeah, some people's taxes went up, some went down, but unfortunately more went up than down. People are struggling. So our job, the five of us, is to look after the school students, the school system, be fair to everybody, but you're not the only game in town, wish you were, but you're not. Uh, and so consequently, we have to make really hard decisions, as Mr. Carter and several <coughs> folks have pointed out, and we have to be fair to the taxpayers. I've said way too much. Somebody else say something. I have, I have never heard, heard of anybody talking about meters from Duke Power. That's a whole new thing. That talking about micro mansion. Are we gonna call Duke Power and tell them to go over there and spend probably hundreds of thousands of dollars to put it all on one meter or is that just the way they do things? Because no, you know the combine, high schools have A, B, C, D, E, all kind of multiple plantation buildings. I would think that would be a hot mess. I, I'm just curious. I've never I've, I never thought I would hear that, but okay. I spent hours and my wife, IT person, school teacher for 42 years. I know. Hours and hours. We spent our Father's Day weekend and the weekend before and most of the time in between going through that myriad. <coughs> it's a stack like this of deep energy bills. I bet. Uh, and it sights. took a while, but we did figure out that it was not just a one month okay. period of time. Uh, but anyhow. But I, it, Ms. Grace, they may not combine your meters. They may not send you a single bill. They do, it's going to be several pages. Uh, but that's certainly better. Mm. And if they will bill you on the what you use and some, so some magical quote, demand, they pick the four highest months out of the 12 month billing cycle. And for some of these meters, that's what they're billing you for. It's called demand usage. So whatever the highest demand is on that single meter for that four month period of time, that's what they're billing you, not your usage. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, can I continue, please? Please. Um, and as an aside, one of the, while we're suggesting operational needs for saving money, I might suggest that we look at making sure that the thermostats we have in our schools are smart thermostats. That would make a lot more sense. Because I know we're trying to cut them on and cut them off if somebody forgets it's running. And it, recognizing the reason for these bills being as large as they are is because of mold issues and because of getting it cleaned up and because it cost us almost $29 million to get it cleaned up last year. That's an outrageous sum. Um, we don't want it to come back again, so now the schools are having to run heat and air systems 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, whether it's a holiday or not. So um, we also, I also asked uh, County Attorney Stevens to take a look at um, what we're required to pay of the county's of the schools' expenditures. Uh, there are certain limits. There are things we're not required to pay. There are things we are required to pay. Um, one of the things we were we were directed that we're not required to pay is employee expenses. That's not a requirement of the county. What is a requirement of the county is pretty much operational expenses, um, heat, air, um, insurance, things of that nature. Um, but now. One of the things that we're being requested to pay in this particular transaction is the legislated cost for, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stevens, if you'll expand on that for me. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Carter. Uh, so that was the question that I got, is to the extent that 
employees are funded entirely or partly out of local dollars rather than state dollars or federal dollars. Um, the question is whether or not if there is an increase in the required contribution to that employee's retirement in the TSER system, whether that has to come out of county dollars or state dollars. The answer is that it has to come out of local dollars. So if they're a locally funded employee, then the local government dollars have to fund the increase in their retirement contribution. And how many locally? Well, we, I think the number that we got, is, if I'm if I'm mistaken, Dr. Harrison, let me know, please. But I think the number of locally funded positions right now is 121, 121, 122, something like that. It's probably in, in the ballpark. We're running down the number of uh, transportation people, technology people, and. And make these people who pay them locally. Um, it's we have right now. We have eleven locally paid teachers. Would you come to the podium, please? Oh, I thought I'd never be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Want everybody to be able to hear you. Too many people have heard too much of me. Um, <laughs> let me say. Mr. Carter, I'm coming from exactly the uh, same standpoint you're coming from on this thing. I, I understand, and I've said this before, so I apologize. The obligation you have to the entire county, and I certainly understand uh, our needs. We, um, I pulled together the, uh, the best I could some of the information that you guys asked for today. And in... In 22-23, we had 34 locally paid teachers, 12 lead teachers, one nurse salary, nine counselors, $1.6 million um, for SROs, and $704,000 for directors in, in the district. In 21-22, we had 24 assistant principals we paid locally, 38 locally paid teachers, three lead teachers, two social workers, nine counselors, four nurses, one CTE director, Two maintenance directors, $1.3 million in maintenance, finance personnel, $132,000. One finance director, $141,000 in human resource salaries, one public relations director, one regular regular curriculum super, supervisor directors, $518,000, one driver's ed, and one assistant superintendent. What was the total of that year, sir? Oh, man, I... Uh, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> you guys had me scrambling. You guys had me scrambling today, and I, I was doing my regular stuff. Um, 21, 20, 2021, 31 locally paid teachers, one lead teacher, one EC, four guidance counselors, four nurses, four non certified nurses, SRO 960,000, regular curriculum directors, one CTE, two maintenance directors, maintenance staff, 1.1 million, one risk manager, and, and one human resource salary. Uh, salary. And that's that fluctuation from year one year to another, and it takes me back to the statistical profile, um, Mr. Paisley, that you referenced last week, and the number of locally paid teachers, and the number of lo assistant principals, and the number of locally paid people that we were looking at. We have a number of funds, and that we get from state dollars, and I think this goes back to the presentation that I asked to have ready for me last on Friday. Didn't ask for it this time, but there's a um, a, a code that we get from the um, from the state with their allotment called S school building administration we have 38 principals and we have the equivalent of 22.5 assistant principals from that code alone all right then we have a um, instructional support category from that category we can also pay assistant principals and then we supplement that with local people as as well and so what may have happened what, what did happen I, I think mr paisley the number you cited i believe was 41 assistant principals paid out of state my my guess is my numbers got swiped. 44 <laughs> 44 all right my memory's getting pretty good for an old good. guy um my guess is 22 and a half of them came from the school building uh, administration code 
and the others came from another source of state funding that were permitted to move into that. Thus, the, the 44. Um, we could have supplemented them with, with local people, and, and, it, and that number would have looked different. So it's, it's really difficult to compare school system to school system with what they use local funds for. And I think the example being what we've seen in the, the SROs, we know based on our contract with the law enforcement agencies, we spend $3 million a year on, uh, on SROs. That comes from the $420,000 that the state provides for SROs. Some of that can come from um, at-risk money, and some of that can come from local. So that total figure comes from another number of sources. So it's not, so it's very difficult to say exactly, um, and, and comparing apples and apples with different school districts. Um, and Mr. Carter, I'll also agree that um, we've been a train wreck. Mayor Barton? I said, I'll also agree with the comment about us being a train wreck. All right, no way around that. We spent about an hour and a half today talking about ways that we can ensure you that we need what we're asking for and figuring out ways that we can ensure you that we're spending money as we're representing, that we're not using money asking for something, money for a function and, and using it elsewhere. 2019, we added 1.054 dollars to our fund balance. 2020, we added 1.38 million dollars to our fund balance. 2021, we added five, 537, 537,000 to our fund balance. So those three years, we added just shy of $3 million to our fund balance. In 21-22, we used three and a half of that. 23-24, you've heard me say this one before, we, we used another three and a half million, so then it's gone, and this year we used ESSER money. My guess is COVID caused us to spend a lot of that money. Um, <clears throat> ESSER money was just coming in into play. We, we weren't sure that we were getting that. We weren't sure how we were going to use that. There were some, there was some uncertainty on, on the part of, of how we, we, we use that. We talked on Friday about um, not having a technology budget and taking care of all these technology needs. And I sat down with our technology director and asked him about that. And he said, I just go for, ask for the money, tell him what we need, and we get it. I said, was that like that in 2018? He said, no, we had a budget. We knew from which we were working. So we kind of took care of our technology needs as they came about. Big technology needs when COVID hit because of um, getting the one-to-one -one devices out. And, and I was told the other day, and I tell people, that, don't tell me about COVID, it's two, it's, it's two years gone. All right, that's, that, that's not it anymore. It, it's, it's other things. So we, we came accustomed with this, this fund balance and, and we weren't as tight in our, in our budgeting as we should be. Um, so, so that variance between those local expenditures that I mentioned to you from 21 to 22, 22 to 23, and, and where we are now, was simply a matter of, of, of moving money around. But you know, what, what we think is we've got something in place. I think the quarterly joint meetings that we talked about with Mr. Stevens and Mr. Baker this morning would be a great idea, that it would do two things. It, it would let you know exactly how we're spending our money and, um, and, and just be a, a degree of, um, of, of transparency and, and accountability. And my, my friend Mr. Morkin and, and I met uh, in 1995 and we were adversaries at the get-go. I think over the years we've developed a mutual respect for one another, and, and he knows I don't pass the buck and I am accountable and stand up and I'm accountable at, at all times. So, uh, um, so I, I think putting that in place, what you talked about with the utilities is, is more than fair. 
I understand from where you're coming. I hope you understand from where we're coming. Uh, I've not done a good job of explaining that October bill uh, because I heard it, Mr. Paisley, last Friday. I heard it again today. Uh, I think uh, we, we got clear today with Mr. Baker and Mr. Stevens about what we've done with utilities and, and the spreadsheet of, uh, from where our, our projection came. We're actually uh, in conversations with Duke Power right now. We have a we have I can't even remember what school it is, Mr. Paisley, but we have a separate bill for the marquee out in front of mm -hmm. one of our schools. All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I I asked the same question. So we're in conversations with them, and I think Mr. Carter, you and I spoke the other day. Uh, we're talking with them about smart thermostats. We're talking with them um, about doing an audit for us. They're a little bit behind on that, so we're, I'm not sure that we're going to get the energy audit this coming year. But we've, we've got that stuff in the works, and I think we're putting, uh, we're putting in place some, uh, some guardrails and, and some assurances. And I think that as we go through these quarterly meetings next year, what that will do for us is help us do a better job of presenting a budget to you come next May. And my goal had, has always been to be pretty much done with the budget in mid-March and really begin having conversations with the uh, county manager and, and finance staff, staff as we work to the final budget to present to our board and then ultimately to the commissioners. We didn't get started on this until March 18th. And, and maybe not the 19th, my second or third day on the, on the job. And that's all I'm pretty much all uh, Ms. Johnson and I and a, and a whole lot of other people have done. Um, yeah, um, can I leave anything out? I, I have, I, I sent you guys, uh, you men and you women, a, uh, um, a copy, electronic copy of the public school forum report that, that you referenced last, um, last Friday. And um, I, I looked at area systems and I looked at the um, systems that are, are surrounding us that, that you said. We've talked last week uh, and I gave an example of one particular teacher that I know um, who is leaving us to, to go, to, left us before, came back for a particular reason. That reason is, is gone. That's, my, that's me that that reason is gone, not the commissioners. And now she's going back um, because of the, of the supplement. You know, we made an effort, and, and you guys have done well by us, back in 2014 with the, as part of the strategic plan, to become competitive with Orange, Durham, and Guilford. So Chapel Hill's in a world of their own. And, um, and we were making great progress. I think year one, we increased by a percent. Year two, we increased by a percent. Then I think it went a half a percent, half a percent. But evidently, you stayed with that for uh, a couple of years, so I, I, I appreciate that. I think we were up as high as 12th or 13th in the state. I think we're back, we slid down a little bit to 20th. Um, but that's, that's important. Uh, again, the legal obligation that you have is, is pretty clear. Um, you know, I think that there's, there's some responsibilities we have as a, as a community as well. Um, to our young people and, and to, um, I'll, I'll try not to get on down the rabbit hole I usually do, but you know, you've heard me say I believe education is economic development, public education is economic development. We're working uh, to provide, uh, provide opportunities that, um, that our, our kids deserve and, and knowing that uh, there aren't blank checks out there and, and knowing that every step is hard to write. In the email that you sent me with the, uh, the list that you just discussed of uh, positions, are the years the years in which those positions were hired, or are those the people that were in those positions in those years? I think those were the year, the, that's, that's simply how we, I don't know when they were hired, it's simply how we funded those particular positions. So what we've seen is, you know, we may have a, um, a group of, of counselors that were hired at different times and from year to year they're paid from different sources. The, and, and nobody knows that other than the, um, the finance officer or if the teacher would look at his or her check, they'll see 
funding source one, which would be state dollars, funding source two, which would be uh, local dollars, funding source three, which would be federal dollars. And, and so it's, again, that's why some of this is, is hard to pinpoint. Um, you know, and again, I've talked, and, and why people are shifted is we want to make sure that our high pay, highest paid teachers are on the state payroll because they'll pay actual salaries. And so you can hire, you know, two beginning, you can hire a third beginning teacher for the same price as a, uh, as two veteran teachers. So we want to make sure every school system uh, strives to make sure we pay, that we use all the state dollars before we even dip in where we can. So um, we want, you know, the, the goal at the end of the year is, is make sure you spend every penny of state money that you have. Because as you, I think it was you that said, Mr. Carter, that that money goes back if we don't use it. And the same thing with, with federal dollars. Right. And what that does sometimes, it, it hasn't recently, because it, it, it is that's from where our fund balance would, would accumulate. Uh, but it you, hasn't the last couple of years. I know you were here, and then you were gone, and now you're back. Yep. Yep. Um, I can't help but wonder, with the knowledge that the county is not paid, required to pay for these jobs, did anybody ever think when you were budgeting to let us know that we were paying for positions that we were not statutorily required to pay? I, um, I hope when, when I present it, I don't think I said it in that, that language, but I would hope whenever we present it, the budget, um, is that it was put, presented in the context of these are positions to supplement what we get from uh, from the state. There are additional positions. It, you know, the the lo we, we would ask for a teacher to um, a teaching position to cause us not to have a, um, a a combination class. When when I was in Cumberland County, we we had a little school, rural school that had 120 kids. And those kids didn't come in neat little packages for, for each of the six grade levels. Well, we made sure that we had a teacher for each grade level. Um, you know, one of the things I, I met with a, um, a group of parents from uh, Smith Elementary um, one of the day, I don't know, I guess, I can't remember whether it was the day, it must have been after our, our meeting here. And um, they were going to have a, a fourth and fifth grade combination dual language class and they wanted to talk with me about that and, and I said you know that's what we can do I said I can find a, a native speaking um, teacher assistant for you but I, I can't find a teacher in, in this budget year and I said but here are what we can do in the future to make sure we don't get that situation <coughs> well and part of the reason I'm asking that question as we all know when COVID hit millions hundreds of millions of dollars flowed in and I'm trying to remember who was on the board with me at the time. It may have only been Craig today. But um, we made it, tried to make it painfully clear to the school board. And I, a, a number of the people that are on the school board today were not there at that time. Um, that don't use that money to hire a bunch of people, a bunch of positions that aren't state mandated, because that is not going to be a promising relationship for us as a county to be asked to fund those positions at some point in the future when those dollars go away. It's kind of like us taking our fund balance and using it to pay for recurring expenses, which it's primarily intended to use for use for emergency or non-recurring expenses. And we have, I'm not sure how much dollars are involved, but a significant number of dollars involved in recurring payroll for 120 some odd people that we didn't know we were paying for. It was, it was being buried in the budget. And I've heard, uh, and in your defense, I know, I'm hearing that y'all are still having a problem, even with state help, trying to figure out what happened last year in finance. So um, that's that's scary. It is. As, as if I were not on this board, 
and I was a citizen out of Mans County. That would scare me. Yeah. Because your budget is bigger than our budget is. Yeah. You so, know, I um. That that painful the discuss that 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 painful discussion that you were um, projecting. I have the pleasure of being in the middle of it. I know. Right. And so we we're looking here at 121 people yeah. that we didn't know we were paying, and that puts us on the horns of a dilemma. And that if we cut that money, we're cutting 121 jobs. We probably don't want to cut. Mr. Carter, I, again, I, I I think when when we presented budgets, we and we talked about the purpose of those, and it was it was local people. I don't know how that was presented. Many of those are are left over from from my time. There were some positions we expanded during my time, um, and we were you know again we we didn't use that particular language, but. Um, there are a lot of local paid positions in a lot of a lot of places. We didn't I'm have sure. any in. Sure. We didn't have any in. Uh, we just you know, and I think I said it to you the first time I talked with you. Um, I think one of the speakers talked about the state's not meeting its obligation. I, I just think that, and, and this has been going on for 30 years, so it's not a partisan <laughs> thing. I think I mentioned that the other day. A lot of stuff gets pushed down on the but county. But doesn't the and state the give you direction on, on the size of your school, like how much staff is going to be needed for that particular school? Well, they the, the funding formula they give us for assistant principals is one month of employment for every 98.5 schools. Right, what that turns out to in Alamance County is 22.5 assistant principals. We have seven high ten schools. Months. Pardon me? Ten months. For ten months. For, okay, that gives us 22 and a half ten-month principals. Um, we have um, seven large comprehensive high schools that I think the size of our schools, you would look at most systems in the state would have three assistant principals. Maybe Cummings and Graham, a little bit smaller, would, would have two. Um, we have um, middle schools with seven, eight hundred students. You need at least two assistant principals. We had three assistant principals in our Title I schools that have, have greater challenges. Um, so right there, um, we don't have enough assistant principals from the state. But is the assistant principal, is it per students? Like you have one assistant principal, I'm just using, I don't know, for 500 students. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get. Yeah, now, to. What they, their allotment formula is one month, of a, one month of assistant principal employment for every 98.5 school. So for every 100 students. Students. Yeah. Students. students. What did I say? Schools. Schools. I'm sorry. Students. You want to come up here and do this one? Yeah. <laughs> one, one month of assistant principal employment for every 98.5 students. Okay. What we have, based on, and they don't, they don't look at individual schools. They look at our system numbers, and then we figure it. Again, I think I shared, we get kinder, kindergarten teachers at 1 to 18. Um, so they look at the total number of kindergarten students we have, divide that by 18, that's how many teachers we get. And then they don't come in neat little packages of, of 18 all over the place. They do give us one principal for every school that has at least seven teachers and 100 students. Um, so I think the last presentation I gave to you um, showed we only had 37 principal principals and we we kind of thought that that might have been Ray Street because students aren't necessarily signed there at the beginning of the year but as we investigated and and worked with our friends in Raleigh um, they said it was SeaTac because the students weren't assigned there they're, they're half time in their schools Ms. Johnson did some great research and found an, um, a memo that we got from the state back in uh, 2018 uh, when they talked about that law, that was either seven, it used to be seven teachers or 100 students, now it's seven and, and they excluded uh, six schools from, uh, from that, and CTEC was one of them. So we've recaptured that particular principle. So 
you know, we're doing what we can, reaching out to the state and uh, questioning things. I mean, I, I still question the uh, uh, the reduction in students that we have. But I think that um, based on their funding formula, that's that's where we are. We think based on the last couple years, um, we've picked up considerable numbers of students after the, the start of the school year. And so we think that um, we'll probably do the same. I, I don't know what the threshold is for them to provide another teacher for you afterwards. But, but Mr. Carter, I, I would say that there was never any intent um, when any superintendent came up and, and tried to sneak extra people, people in here. Now, I think that what we did, and, and again, I... Um, we just the every time I assume I get in trouble, and I assume that the information on the type of PowerPoint presentation that we provided is what we did for the last couple of years, and, and that was um, that would suffice again this year. Uh, based on a lot of things, the board the commissioners wants a lot more information, so we'll have a better idea going into next year what that needs to take, and we'll do whatever we can to uh, make sure you get the information that, that you're looking for. And every question that you've had has been a, uh, a legitimate question. And I understand it, and I hate that uh, I'm not as sharp as I should be on being able to have an answer uh, from the get-go, and, and that's why I asked those of you who I had a chance to sit down with individually to let me know a little bit in advance. Um, I can... Um, um, can get the answer before we get here. Even when the staff comes along with me who do the work every day, uh, they could probably only answer 75% of your questions. I could probably answer 25%. So that's why. That's why I've got good people holding me up. Well, I would I, I would just suggest um, that a part of budget presentations going forward would include this information so that we would definitely not have any question about it. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and, I've been on the board now for six years. I may not be the sharpest tack in the pack, but I don't remember any discussions about this information in our budget discussions. And uh, um, I just, it's important, especially if we're called on to pay the money. And, and I think, again, I think that's, um, that's a legitimate ask, and I think that would cause us to um, do a better job of creating the line items. Uh, I think some of what we've done is simply this is this is what our budget was last year. This is what we want to add this year, and so this is what we're asking for. And again, I think going back to that extra money and, and spending it, I think I think they did a uh, pretty decent job of staying away from personnel on extra because they knew it was recurring. But when we ran into fiscal problems, we did we started shifting people to to extra this year actually in, in, in March after I got here so we could we could close some of those gaps that we had knowing that that money was going to be gone in September right. and so that seven and a half million dollars worth of cuts that we put in there that, those were all those positions that's why you hadn't seen me up here kicking and screaming asking for those particular positions so we know that um, we had moved those that we probably paid for them in some form or fashion out of um, fund balance in prior years uh, Esther bailed us out this year. There's no bail next year. So we cut those things. And, and we've been over, as best we can, the um, what we had, how we came up with that $10.4 million. And again, we've, we've saved some of that. I, I appreciate the uh, conversation around moving the um, technology ask to, uh, to capital. I think we had some good conversation uh, about some of the service contracts that we've had. We've continued to, to whittle down what we're paying on the uh, on the virtual school, and um, again, these 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 were needs, folks. These, these weren't wants. Well, I, I honestly believe that where we are right now is putting us in a better position for our two organizations to work closely together instead of further apart. I mean, that, when I ran in 2018, uh, 2018 I guess it was, yeah, um, one of the things I wanted to do was stop the 
headbutting between the board of commissioners and the and the school board and bring us together and we've kind of gone the other way it's been very frustrating and uh, I hope yeah. some sort of process that will come out of this will help us work together and meet the needs not yeah. only for ABSS well, yeah. but and for again, our I, I think other we've, departments and for the county. Yeah, I, I think we've got a real good starting point with um, with the reporting for next year. I think we also talked a little bit, Mr. Stevens, um, about with that line item. There are a lot of questions you guys have right. about the supplement and vacancies that I just I just can't give you an answer for. But what we can come up with an agreement um, that um, we'll track that particular line item in our budget will be there for, for, for supplements and whatever's not spent on supplements will revert back to the county at the end of the year or, or, or kind of like your taxes at the end of the year will go towards the, the next year. We'll just write that off at, uh, at the request for, for next year. So I think that, um, you know, I think that's a real good start. You know, the other thing I think I mentioned when we were in Cumberland and had a, uh, a real, real serious budget impasse, and we were on the on the board of, uh, we'd actually hired an attorney, we'd been through mediation, and, and we didn't get anywhere. County manager and finance officer, and our finance officer and I worked out something, and the next year we developed a, a funding formula that was fair to you guys, and was fair to us based on the tax rate, based on, on growth, based on what the state <laughs> Was going to do to us so i think there are some things that we can do um if we're and you i've said this in, in a couple of different ways <coughs> if we're, we're willing to sit down and, and talk and, and respect one another and respect one another's opinions um I, I think at the end of the day we we all want the same thing I, th I think at the end of the day sometimes we think you get there in different ways but i think when uh people with um diverse opinions can come and work together uh, towards a common goal, that's when incredible things can happen. And, I, and you know, there's just so much potential in this community, so much potential. Well, I think Commissioner Turner has uh, had some numbers for the two mandatory, a couple of mandatory expense items. Did you have some specific numbers on those? I did. I'm happy to defer to Commissioner Thompson. She has any other questions. Oh, I'm sorry. That's um, okay. I'm good. Uh, let me say b before I go into that, uh, I appreciate your comments, Dr. Pierce. Um, it, it has been it has been a difficult year uh, between our boards, between our organizations. Um, you know, budget requests that, that didn't reflect yearly spending, um, mismanagement of funds. You turned it a train wreck. Um, Mr. Carter turned it a train wreck. Uh, <laughs> someone well, now, mentioned train wreck. Support me on that. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to. I need to support the chair. Of my, well, it's my chair you know my there. Commission. Obviously, the accusations back and forth over the last year, and you know the mold crisis, costing twenty nine million dollars that could have gone to roofs, could have gone to pavements, uh, parking lots, bleachers. Um, so it has been tough. And the, the result, there have been a lot of results. One of the results is that the trusts, the trust between our organizations has atrophied. Um, but ABSS staff who was present for the last year is not here. Um, you're here, you're one of the most senior, and I mean that in times of time in office, <laughs> uh, superintendents in the state. Um, I, I feel confident in and the fact that a new the new leadership is coming to ABSS and hope that that new leadership has vision to move ABSS forward and I think at least we can anticipate that that new leadership will, will have the competence to continue to guide the district and to continue to facilitate trust with our with our board um, so I, I guess all that having been said I, I think it's time to turn the page and I hope that we can turn the page tonight, and I, I think we can. Um, but we need to dig into this a little bit, I think, to do that. Um, the If I look at your at your line item requests, we talked about the $1.4 million in the technology and support equipment that can come out of your operations request and go into capital funding. I think that's a good idea. I think we can't fund all of it, but 95% of it at $1.388 million. So that comes off the top that you could get that has no operational impact. Um, I then move to your 
continuation budget request, and we've talked a lot about the utility increases at $2.5 million. I've seen no other number with that I have confidence in that, says, that suggests that that's wrong. You guys have done your analysis. We've done our separate analysis. The only number I've seen is 2.5. That's to keep the lights on. Uh, so, I mean, I, there's just no way we can't do that, in my opinion. So that's a $2.5 million increase that I think ABSS has to have. That's a penny. But, again, it's, it's to keep the lights on. When I look at the rest of your continuation budget, um, the salary increases at uh, at seven hundred fifty five thousand dollars. I just rounded it seven hundred to make it to make the numbers a little more even, and that is a little bit of a squishy number. Not the three percent, which, as I understand it, would 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 keep the the proportion of supplement to to state mandated salary. Um, you're not sure quite how many you're going to teachers that you're going to have, but we've talked about the fact one of those guardrails is if we allocate if we allocate seven hundred thousand, if you don't use all of it then we could have a true up at the end of the year. And I, I think that makes sense as a guardrail to continue to have trust between our organizations. The $500,000 retirement rate increase, it's a 2% requirement from the state, which applies to local, locally um, funded employees, which you, you mean have to match. You can't have some employees in your organization at different levels than others. So it, it's just, it has to be funded. If you don't get money to fund it, then you're, you have no fund balance. To go into so you're going to have to cut people you've already cut seven million dollars worth of people um and, and I, I i don't think you ought to have to cut anymore um so if you fund that it'd be five hundred thousand the health insurance increase which is legislated re a legislated requirement again which you have to fund for your local people the fifty thousand dollar step increase and then the seven hundred thousand dollar charter school which starters charter school increase which as i understand it is based upon a true up from last year to get you even with the amount that you as a pass-through billing from the state through you to charter schools, which personally I think is a bad way to fund charter schools because it puts, it essentially puts the tax burden on the county instead of the state. Because in order for you to remain whole, the county has to then backfill your, your funds. Um, there's some savings you can make based on not having to, to pay for those students, but you can't out, you can't attribute that to any one particular place because they're coming from all the different yeah. states. This was uh, one of the things that Mr. Morgan, my friend, and I used to argue about. And I, uh, I'm a believer in choice. I'm a believer in charter schools. I think there's some great charter schools. I think there's some okay charter schools. I think there are some terrible charter schools. Same thing with traditional public schools, so I'll acknowledge that. I think the state needs to come up with a better funding mechanism for yes. it because what happens, it puts us in an adversarial position. So we're in a, in a position that um, they get our local per pupil expenditure. So whatever that is, we, in addition to the state money they get, they get that from us. And we come up with that figure because about 10% of our school age children go to charter schools. So that's where that came from. We didn't, we added a little bit too because we didn't budget. We're in the hole this year. So that's... Um, yeah, and that's, Dr. Harrison, that's really a pass-through. The funds follow the student. Why should you benefit ABSS from the students going to the charter school? Well, because it, it, hurts, it, 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 it hurts me when I present my budget because I'm having to ask for an additional number to pass through. If they could simply say, charter schools, you go, directly to the county commissioners. When I was in Orange County, the, the commissioners had to fund our, our operational expense the same. So I would go and sit in there and Chapel Hill would ask for the moon and I didn't have to step up and say anything and I got more than I was looking for. And so the same thing, uh, but I had to go and I present my budget. And I think if, but, but my budget, even though it had to be the same per pupil as Chapel Hill's, it came to me. It, it didn't pass through Chapel Hill. It's going to Chapel Hill pass through us. So I think the same thing, you have that same obligation, but then have the charter school people come to you just like we're doing and say it has to be the same, but the money doesn't come to us. So it's... But we don't pay for any of their operational... We don't. We don't pay anything. The we, money we, passes through, it, it goes it, to it, you. You have to give it to the charter schools, and but, it follows the But what students. I'm saying, if... What I'm and saying is, no, I, I, I know we don't, but what it store. does, it, it inflates, it inflates my budget ask. It, it, that's all, it inflates my budget ask. I'm, I'm asking 
for more than we'll use to serve our children because I know that money's gonna pass through us. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt me at the state level because the money goes directly to the student. The money does follow Explain the student there. Explain to me why it hurts you at the local level. Because I'm standing here asking you for an additional 700,000. That is going to the charter school. It, it, it is, but it, it, yeah, it, it makes my number go up. Why? I do not understand. Wanting you to supplement the funds that are going to charter schools. Beg pardon? He's wanting you to supplement his funding locally that is going to charter schools. Right, but if the money is, as Chair Paisley is asking, I've had the, I'm, I'm really struggling with that same thing. <laughs> you get money in, the student isn't there to use the money, student goes to a charter school, you t transfer that money to the charter school. It comes in, goes out. There's no child there to be paid for by Correct. that money. So why do you then need more money from the county to fund a child who's not in school? Yeah, I, I think Ms. York explained it, is that whatever we end up with from you guys, in our case, because of the 10% number of students, 10% of it needs to go right. to charter schools so we have I said whatever you guys give us at the end of the day 10% of that goes to the charter schools and we based our needs on what we felt our needs were come up with a figure and then knowing we we're going to have to spend 10% of that to go to charter schools that caused us to ask for for you to cover said, that you don't have the students either yeah okay but if he doesn't get the money from us then he's short He's he, short because they're not. He's not servicing that child. Those, that child. But his operational costs are are set. Operation costs are separate. We do that through all kinds of things. Well, if I could just get through my yeah, can yeah. Craig finish? So, so, so all of that. If you look at that continuation budget increase to take out the utilities, which is already two point five, uh, it's a total of. And I'm using a seven hundred thousand instead of a seven fifty five number, but that's. Uh, Two million one hundred and twelve thousand dollars, which leaves, if you were to get five million dollars in addition to the one point four, that would leave uh, three three hundred eighty-eight thousand uh, dollars, two hundred forty-seven of which could fund your ABS, which <coughs> leaves um, about one hundred fifty thousand dollars plus the two hundred thousand dollars that you're going to get in fees and forfeitures, which leaves about four hundred fifty thousand dollars for other things. Um, that would be a five hundred a five million dollar increase to ABSS. That's two cents on the tax rate. Um, but to me, that is a reasonable place to land. In addition, particularly in getting the one point four million for your technology requests. And I think, based on what I've looked at in my conversations with others, uh, would mean that you wouldn't have to riff employees. That's where I am. Let me back. Are you riffing employees? I thought you said nobody would lose their job. I'm saying if we d if they don't get that. If they I don't get that. I said, yeah, I said no one would lose their jobs based on where we were with the budget that we presented. And, and that was contingent upon which, what, what you guys have done. If we don't get our, in, our, our ask, then we have nowhere to go but people. Well, your ask is what, $10 million? It is. Yeah. So if you don't get an additional five cent tax hike for ABSS solely, you're gonna you're gonna let uh, teachers and others lose their jobs. Is I'm, I'm trying to understand Yeah we will we will look at we will look at what we have to do to operate within the means that, that you provide us. Ninety percent of our budget is people. Um, I'm not sure where we'd go. I, I asked last. I was asked last time we, I stood up here uh, about where would the people come from. I mean, what what would you be? What, what would it be? And and I named a couple of areas. And I said I'm reluctant to throw something out there because it causes all the anxiety that existed back in February that didn't come to refer, fruition. And so I cited areas and the amount of money that we got for those areas and recognizing we're not going to cut those out completely but you know we would probably start um reducing the number of sros in our in our elementary schools 
certainly not going to take them out of our high schools, certainly not going to take them out of our middle schools. Um, we're not going to take them completely out of elementary schools, but we'd probably share. To, so we'd, we'd go into that pot. We'd probably go into more, um, more social workers. Um, we'd probably go into to nurses. Um, we have, we're, we're, we're very well staffed in, in nurses. Uh, but nurses are more important today than they've ever been before. We have more children with, with health, um, health issues and health needs. And I, I kind of joked with a couple of nurses um, after we've reduced a couple of positions, every time I walk into a school and the nurses, their nurses' office is busy. I say, you guys are just doing this because I'm coming here. But, but that would be an area that we'd consider. Um, more assistant principals. Again, that would probably be my last choice on that. Pro probably counselors, SROs, nurses, counselors, social workers, then assistant principals. And then look, um, you know, we probably cut another position or two at central services. Um, I think um, we eliminated two big positions. We probably go to next year, probably, well, five and a half million dollars um, out of that pot. Um, you just hired a public relations officer. We did. Do you know the salary for that individual? Um, I think it's 102. Less than less than the one we were we had. Mr. Chairman, uh, of their 10.3 request, 1.4 we talked about offloading that to capital. 1.2 million is the electricity contingency, which we talked about that a number of meetings not funding, but having this dialogue that, about what the utility costs are and the additional conversations, uh, we I think got the 10.3 number down to I think it was around 6. 6.8, but it was really around 6.4. Um, so the 5.0 would, would not would not fund all of that, obviously. And there's an additional charter school growth number in here at about $800,000, which um, we wouldn't fund either. Uh, so I think there's uh, I think there's there's cuts we've already talked about, which I don't think the 10.3 number um, contains. Uh, well, we've already talked about limiting some of those costs. And, and the charter school number would go down when, when this went down. And I, and I would welcome any suggestions on, on what we need to cut. I think one of my frustrations working with the board through this is their acknowledgement of, of the importance of those things that we were cutting. And, um, and I would say in our board meeting, says, directly, directly. And uh, he said, figure it out. Well, I'm going to ask Manager York, Ms. York. You were trying to explain the issue with the flow through on the, and you tried to explain that to me on the phone, and I must have been praying dead because I did not get it then. The flow through on what? The flow through on the charter school money, if it's coming into the account, into the ABSS, it goes out, and the child is gone, the money's gone. Right. They're not, they're not feeding the child, they're not keeping a child warm or cold, and they're not teaching a child. Yes. And so the money's where that child is. I, I, I'm really struggling with why if that money the county should turn around and replace. You are not obligated to supplement right. to the charter school. That's school. what I mean. So We're not obligated to. So. Let's be clear about that. If the students all came from one school, he would be able to substantiate a savings for those students leaving. He would need potentially less teachers, okay. less custodial. But because they're spread around the entire system, He's not able to recognize a seven hundred thousand dollar savings that he can location. pinpoint. You need to do my presentation for me next year. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. Okay. There are less needs. They're just not concentrated in one place. So he's asking you to supplement that loss of revenue. Where we um, uh, I don't know. I said, is that your? Is that a motion, or is are you thinking out loud, or what are you doing? I'll make it a motion. That's your motion. Well, uh, let me figure it out. <clears throat> um, so I move to um, accept the manager's recommended budget, budget with the following amendments. Um, 
that we increase the tax rate to 47.2 cents, that we fund ABSS technology software equipment request totaling $1.388 million with the Davenport Capital Reserve Plan, and that we fund an additional $5 million in ongoing operating expenses to ABSS, that we add the $200,000 in additional fines and forfeitures to ABSS. And finally, that we remove Section 13 from the manager's recommended budget, with, which is a policy about economic development notice. That is my motion. I'll second your motion. Got it. Is there discussion? And absolutely. <laughs> Section 13, it is asking that we not adopt, has to do with incentives and bringing industry into Alamance County. It's authorization for appropriations for ec economic development purposes. It reads, any expenditures pursuant to NC General Statute 148-7.1 must be approved by the LMS County Board of Commissioners, and that's the current law. That's not a change. Uh, and maybe only after a public hearing, that's current law, no change there. So public hearing shall be held after public notice of not less than 10 days. All appropriation expenditures pursuant to the same statute shall be subject to the provisions of the Local Government Budget and Physical Control Act of North Carolina General Statutes, and that's not a change, shall be listed in an annual financial report the county submits to the Local Government Commission, no change. The above requirement is intended to prevent any previous local requirements. Uh, is to preempt, I'm sorry, any previous local requirements regarding activities and payments made pursuant to the name central. Uh, what it does currently, an industry wanting to come into Alamance County and that needs our approval, they must come into a meeting, announce it, wait until the next meeting, have a public hearing, wait till the next meeting, and then a vote. It cuts out one of those steps so they can come in, and county manager, please help me with this. Uh, they can come in, it just cuts out one additional step. We are currently losing some potential uh, industry coming into our county because one, most counties do not require that additional step and the additional notice going to the public. Uh, so we lose out on a number of industries because of that additional requirement. This reduces it to what the state mandate requires. And Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to consider that at, a, at, a, at our next meeting or something. I just thought it was better to consider it separately as rather than as part of the budget. I just think it's costing us money, costing us industry uh, and, and business. I see the, County make yes, the board hands. asked the county attorney and myself to help uh, make sure that our process was consistent with state statutes, and so that's what this language does. Yeah, it brings us in line with everybody else. Is it still part of your motion or not? It, it is. Again, I, I'm happy to consider it at a different meeting alone. And this is a change. It is a change. It requires one additional, our yeah. current policy requires one additional meeting and notification. That's okay. correct. No, the chairman said it correctly. As to increasing our taxes, four cents per hundred, I've had too many people tell me that they're fighting to pay medical bills, <clears throat> cost, 
mortgages, everything else. And every, I, I cannot vote for a four cents per hundred increase. Just cannot do it. That's one, one vote. Okay. Too rich for my blood. When you raise taxes almost three times the rate of inflation, you lost me. Any other comments? I just wonder how the voters of Alamance County are going to feel about this. Hey, partner. I'm just wondering how the voters of Alamance County are going to feel about this. 9.2% increase in taxes. Um, it's too rich for my blood. I had a number. For, I had a number. I blew through that one, so enjoy. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman, I might offer a... a Amended amendment to the motion. If you might, if I might. Um, as I said, I'm still struggling with this pass through issue. If you pull out that $700,000, it takes us down to about three and a half pennies instead of four point two or four point whatever it was. And if you round that down, it would make it. 3.3 .3 pennies are, no, that's not right. Anyway, I'm, I'm not too tired to do math today. Okay. Rebecca will we'll do the math and reflect it on the screen to make sure we oh, okay. the exact amount correct. Anyway, I'm trying to round it to about 40, 47 and uh, 46 and a half. focus on the numbers. Thank you. Does that and what does that round the rate right to? So with, at that number, that gets us to 0.469 of the tax rate, or 3.658 cent increase. Total. That's an increase of 3.658. That's correct. Right. So four hundred and forty-six point six five eight. Yes. That's my amendment. And uh, look. Well, so amend it. The maker of the motion. I understand that. Is that okay with you? No. no. Okay. Was that enough? No. Okay. Heidi? Yes, sir. What dollar amount was your budget? That's what everyone in this room to hear. Um, the general fund was $220.5 million, and all funds was $260.3 million. <coughs> Is it about a two and a half percent increase? Yeah, I knew that. I knew that budget was um, the overall budget. The things that we really don't have right. is, a, is is a bit higher. Um, I, ju I just want to say, Heidi, that your budget you were pretty much stuck between a rock and a hard spot because uh, of, of, of the May fifteenth miss ABSS. Uh, your budget at two twenty five hundred is actually below the rate of inflation. That hasn't happened in this county in a long time. So I just want to thank you for your efforts. So in essence, I'm like Mr. Carter, I can't do that in my head. I think Commissioner Turner has an amendment to my motion. My amendment. 
I would accept an amendment that reduced the school um, allocation to uh, by $500,000. No. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it would reduce it by, yes. $500,000 from the $700,000 Commissioner Carter requested, but would also take $200,000 out of the general fund. Out of fund balance? Yes. For Do we need second that again? Or is it okay? Restate your entire motion, please. <laughs> <laughs> Greg. Accept the manager's recommended budget with the following amendments. Tax rate of 47.2 cents. The allocation of $1.388 million from technology and software and the equipment request to capital paid for by the Davenport plan. And that would transfer, I'm sorry, that would add 4. percent $5 million to ABSS's operational expenses. And that would uh, take $200,000 out of the general fund, I'm sorry, fund balance. But I need to say that the tax rate is actually 4.7. That's not right. It is uh, 46, I'm sorry, yes, 47. Is that, was that what you asked for? No, it's 46.8658 now, wasn't it? Is that right? 46.858. So with the adjustments, um, I am now down to 4.5 million that we are increasing to current expense. Is that right. what you were looking for? Yeah. Okay. And so that takes us to 2.469. It's a 3.735. So you said 46.9? Yes. That's the motion. I'll second. What was the bottom line rate again? The rate would be 46.9. 46.9. I don't know. Did you, did you adjust for the reduction of fund balance? That's what I was hoping. Might need to so it's roughly a three and a half cent increase. It's a 3.735. Right. But if you're adding in the fund balance to the schools, that will reduce that. Mm -hmm. What does that do to our fund balance? It reduces your fund balance and by 200,000. How much below? You're putting, it, you're putting it in current expense, which is a recurring mm -hmm. expenditure. So that's going to hurt our bond rating eventually. It could. Yeah. Well, we had a presentation. I'm sorry. Repeat that, please. We couldn't hear. I said it could. Yeah. Um, current budget funds right now for appropriated fund balance is $7,450,213. <coughs> So with the additional 200,000, that would bring it to 7.65 million. And what would that, what would that percentage of our projected budget be? Well, we knew our worst case scenario was 18%. 18%. I would 18. stay with that. 18 even? Possibly, yes. So as we go ahead with selling bonds, that could cost us additional money. And we don't Thank have you. any more on the table though right now, right? Yeah. And I have to admit I don't like this. But Any further discussion? 
all in favor of increasing our tax rate 3.735 plus pulling more money out of our fund and so forth. Let's clarify that more we had one correction once we updated for appropriated fund balance increase for that 200000 The increase to the property tax rate would be 3.658. That's with your fund balance. Well, I thought that would be. That's what we started with, right? Yep. Where I thought we would be. 658. Okay. And uh, I think your motion also includes uh, striking article or section 13 on page 53 from our proposed um, motion to go in line with the rest of the states, the uh, rest of the counties. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Mr. Lashley, what's your opinion? No. You have two no's, three yeses. County Attorney's Report. Nothing else for me tonight, Board. Thank you. County Manager's Report. Nothing else for me either. Thank you. What is it? Oh, that's in the concern general. Yeah. Uh, any commissioner have a comment? I have a comment. Um, I think that's a decision that's going to make absolutely no one happy. Um, you know, there are folks out there who want um, everything ABSS asked for. There are folks out there who wanted absolutely no tax increase, and I'm certainly not one. To want to recommend any tax increase but i think we've gotten to the point where the county has needs needs services needs services for the county which we funded at a two percent tax a two cent tax increase it needs funds for abss which we funded at some number below <coughs> two cents i'm not quite sure what that is. Um, but we have to make a decision to fund the needs of the county and i don't believe we could have provided less money to ABSS to allow it to fulfill its function. And so I ran on a county that has low taxes and that has excellent schools and that has safe communities. And I certainly trust the sheriff and his ability to provide that. I think we need to revisit the, the um, sign-on bonuses. I think we need to revisit that for these three organizations that we talked about on Friday, and hopefully we will. Um, we don't, have, we don't quite have excellent schools yet, uh, but I think if we had not given ABSS uh, this money, I think we run the risk of allowing them to continue to go down and down in a spiral that they may not be able to recover from. Yeah, it's a tax increase. We still have one of the lowest tax rates in the state, and while everyone is going to feel this, and I feel absolutely terrible about that. I just don't think we had a choice. So while I hang my head a bit um, for the taxes that we've increased, uh, I thought it was the best choice for Alamance County. If you disagree, I understand that. If you punish me, I understand that. But I made the decision I thought was the best for the people. Thank you. Mr. Carr. I have to concur with, com with what Commissioner Turner said. It's, uh, I don't think anybody's happy with what happened tonight. Obviously, there are people who wanted more, and there are people who wanted a whole lot less. Just as that's been already, already been stated. And uh, um, I think this clearly, absolutely clearly, and I mean this with all my heart, puts the onus back on ABSS to get their act together. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on in the finances over there. Right now, y'all don't even know what's going on in finances over there. And that is an extremely scary issue. And throwing an extra $5 million into that pot scares the living daylights out of me. The only thing we can do 
is make sure that we manage and that you manage. Remember, the school board's responsibility is not to cheerlead for the school administration. The school board's responsibility is to look at every penny that's going through your budget and make sure that you're comfortable with it and that we're in agreement. I mean, we have to we have to release the purse strings, not on all of it. Your budget's 300 and what? 350 or more? Ours is 220 or 200 and whatever, 20 something. And it's critical that we get this right going forward and we set the tone for the two boards to work together and make sure we don't run into this kind of a situation where we can't trust you and we get accused of doing stuff we didn't do. Amen. I, I agree too that we, we've got to put the uh, issue of uh, um, signing bonuses for the sheriff's office back on the, on the agenda for July because that is critical. That's the one idea they came up with for trying to fill those critical positions and we don't want to get in the same boat with some of our native, uh, neighbor counties with problems and uh, that program won't even affect the budget. I mean, absolutely zero chance of it affecting the budget. So. We need to get that done. Thank you. Ms. Thompson. I just, um, it's an honor to second your budget, your budget motion, and I, I appreciate you. That takes a lot of leadership to go against the grind sometimes. Um, um, been in office since 2012 as a school board member, and I think there's only one year that I can remember that there wasn't a conflict. It just goes with the territory. And as Dr. Harrison's chairman at one time, I can remember I told him, I believe what you tell me before you say it. And I know I still can, and I appreciate that. And uh, I just want to say something. This entire county, we have got to work together. Every parent has got to show up for their children and their teachers because they're the ones that keep taking the hit. And that's just unacceptable because crime affects them, their school affects them, and they are our future. So I just encourage us all to take this moment, we voted, and move forward. And yesterday, like I tell folks I work with addiction, your yesterday is done. Let's focus on your now and tomorrow. And we have got to do that as a county, as a state, and as a country. We are really in a tough situation every way you look at it. And I'm proud of this county, I'm very proud. If everybody was a Lee Johnson, we'd be in a good place. And I appreciate you, brother. And, um, and I just hope we all have Lee Johnson in our life because he's been a blessing to me. So I just um, thank you board members for working so hard. I'm telling you, it's kind of like having a baby. Y'all don't know, but it's time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you do get what you want when you have a kid. And so, uh, but I thank everybody for coming tonight. And, um, and we just, we got to work together. Find the goodness in every kind of different opinion that we have and make it a great idea. So that's it. Mr. Lashley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just want to answer a question by a speaker tonight is uh, the Alamance County Commissioners did not cancel summer school. That's not on us, but that's par for the course. It's always easier to blame us than it is for the people who are responsible for this to take responsibility for it. It's just easy to blame us for the responsibility of school boards and administration. And I want to thank Lee Johnson for what he's doing for Cummings High School. You know something, Lee? That's how it used to be. That's how it used to be. That the people who went to that school took care of that school. If anything needed to be done at that school, they got together with PTO or whatever, and they made it happen. They don't have that now. It's just sad. It's truly sad. Uh, I just want to uh, say this. Alamance County has always, compared to counties that, that of its size, we always contribute higher than our ability. And boy, is that true again tonight. We are going to be contributing higher than our ability to pay. And that's 
once again, that's not the way it should be. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to have the best speech of the entire night. <laughs> I'm going to say, have a good evening, and I'm glad this vote is over one way or the other. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to set down in favor of Senator Paul Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.